Okay, and welcome to this segment of a pad video. We're talking about crankcase vents or oil separators. So we're working on, and we'll show you the car in a moment. We're working on Audi Q7 with the uh, 3.2 liter, I believe it is, uh, V6 supercharged, supercharged. Uh, maybe a three liter, I don't remember the engine code. But anyway, this car come in for a coolant or antifreeze leak. That's the only reason it was here. Not for check engine lights, not for any kind of drivability issues, just a coolant leak. So I want to show you what all's involved so we can show this video to our current client and we can also show this video to any future clients. Um, try to help better explain what all's involved because it is very time consuming and there's a lot of pieces to it. So hopefully we're going to make this video as short as possible and we can, and this video can be helpful to those um, moving forward. So we've got the old uh, Audi Volkswagen calls it vent trim. Why in the world they call that? I don't know, but we call it oil separator or crankcase vent. That's kind of what I've always heard it called. But anyway, this is the old one that we removed and this sits, we'll show you where it's, pla where it's placed in the engine bay in just a moment, but we got the old one removed and coolant <clears throat> passage here, here, and here. So we got a cool, we got three coolant passages. So coolant continually runs through, if you can see the Y shape, coolant runs through this piece here. It's plastic, it's got a rubber seal, it sits on the top of the engine block, and they are prone to leaking coolant. Fortunately, they typically leak outside and not inside to the, and mix with the engine oil. So this particular one was leaking right here along this top edge which is on the driver's side towards the back of the engine block. So it's leaking there. I've seen them as bad where they're crumbling or breaking apart. So we've got the old one there. And here's a new one. Genuine Volkswagen Audi part. This part's not real easy to get out. Um, so I don't chance it with aftermarket pieces. I want a genuine part to go back in. But you can see the new one, um, how much more raised the seal is here. You can see how nice and raised the seal is. It's new, but new plastic, new seal. This is the way it comes right out of the box. You can see how flat that seal has become and water or coolant has been leaking out right here on these corners, here and here. But this was the worst of it. So a couple tools that are must haves. When we remove these pieces, we remove the fuel injectors um, fuel injectors, your cool tool segment. Fuel injectors require a special tool to remove them. I have not found one any better than Snap-on's version for Volkswagen Audi, IPK1400, IPK1400, direct injection puller kit. There it is. It works beautifully. Um, I wouldn't try to do the job without one of those. <clears throat> so when we remove these fuel injectors, we reseal them. Audi offers a, a seal kit and I'll go through that in just a moment. This is a tool that's necessary to perform the seal replacement. This is a CTA tool, part number 8877. Now this one always also comes with a slide hammer and a puller piece. I don't like it. That's why I use this separate one. Really the only pieces of this tool kit that I use is this installer, this cone, and these, there's three of them actually. Um, I've got one here, but anyway, three of these seal installers. That's, I don't even use the slide hammer piece because this one works so much easier. This particular unit, you can see the slide hammer, how short the throw is. I mean, it's, it's heavy, but it's a real short throw. I just don't like it. All right, so let's move on to the fuel injectors. So we reseal these fuel injectors. <clears throat> this is a, these are injectors that come out of the car. This one has already been resealed. This one has not yet. You can see it's still very dirty. I haven't even cleaned it, but they get a new Teflon seal right here. They get a new Teflon seal. They'll get this new plastic spacer and this O-ring. This one you can see has a new Teflon seal installed, O-ring or plastic spacer and O-ring. Here are the, here are the parts. They come in this kit, three pieces. Teflon seal, O-ring, plastic spacer. Now, <clears throat> the way these come off is this Teflon O-ring, you gotta cut it. There's no other way, but you can see how brittle it is. So 
but just cut off and you can see all the little pieces that i've broken or pulled off already and see how they easily break and these o-rings we replace all of those this is uh audi calls it a um oh gosh i forgot the term but this is another little spacer uh, I try not to mess with that. They can be very fragile. They are replaceable. Um, they're usually special order, but if you clean them and are very careful with them, you just leave them on there and you can reuse them. Okay, so this is how we reseal. We do all six injectors that way. We reseal them before they go back in. Uh, that way we don't have any drivability issues because we remove them, we disturb those seals. You see how brittle and easily they break. Don't want to take any chances of getting all this back together because it's a lot of work and having issues for something that simple. So we're gonna to go to the car, the engine bay, and we'll show you exactly where this is going. Okay, so now we're at the engine bay. Um, as you can see, we've got all the pieces removed. Um, here is the new vent trim that Audi calls it. This is our new piece that's going in. So if you look into the center of the engine here, we've got the supercharger out. We've got the intake manifolds out. We have the vent trim out, and this is where it sits right here so i'll have to do some finagling with hoses and stuff but it sits down in the center and this here connects to our crankcase vent hoses that run to each valve cover or cam cover right there <clears throat> now we have these three injectors that have already been resealed we have them installed one two three actually got a fourth one here i still have two that you saw earlier in the video i haven't put them in yet but we'll install those two but that vent trim sits right here and it typically leaks right here across the back. You can see the coolant passage one, coolant passage two, and they'll leak across the back here or here and fill up this valley. They'll fill up these voids. It'll run to the front because the front's much lower point. You can see how tall it is back here. That coolant will fill these voids, run to the front, run out the front of the engine, get caught up in the belts while the engine's running and that belt just slings coolant all over the engine bay. So it really makes a mess, but this is the culprit of the coolant leaks. So anyway, you can see there's a lot involved, a lot of pieces, a lot of tedious um, work to be done. But anyway, we hope this helps. Uh, if you have questions, post them below. We'll reply as soon as we can. But um, anyway, moving forward, hopefully this will help anyone watching the video and help our future clients and our current clients. So thank you so much for watching another pad video.